1866-1871 After the Seven Weeks War the German Confederation was dissolved and the North German Federation, German Norddeutscher Bund, was established under the leadership of Prussia. Austria was excluded and its immense influence over Germany finally came to an end. The North German Federation was transitional organization that existed from 1867 to 1871, between the dissolution of the German Confederation and the founding of the German Empire. German Empire, 1871-1918 Overview Chancellor Otto von Bismarck determined the political course of the German Empire until 1890. He fostered alliances in Europe to contain France on the one hand and aspire to consolidate Germany's influence in Europe on the other. His principal domestic policies focused on the suppression of socialism and the reduction of the strong influence of the Roman Catholic Church on its adherents. He issued series of anti-socialist laws in accord with set of social laws, that included universal health care, pension plans and other social security programs. His Kulturkampf policies were vehemently resisted by Catholics, who organized political opposition in the center, Zentrum, party. German industrial and economic power had grown to match Britain by 1900. In 1888, the young and ambitious Kaiser Wilhelm II became emperor. He rejected advice from experienced politicians and ordered Bismarck's resignation in 1890. He opposed Bismarck's careful and delicate foreign policy and was determined to pursue colonialist policies, as Britain and France had been doing for centuries. The Kaiser promoted the active colonization of Africa and Asia for the lands that were not already colonies of other European powers. The Kaiser took mostly a unilateral approach in Europe only allied with the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and embarked on dangerous naval arms race with Britain. His aggressive and erroneous policies greatly contributed to the situation in which the assassination of the Austrian-Hungarian crown prince would spark off World War I Bismarck era the new empire in 1868. The Spanish Queen Isabella II was deposed in the Glorious Revolution, leaving the country's throne vacant. When Prussia suggested the Hohenzollern candidate, Prince Leopold as successor, France vehemently objected. The matter evolved into diplomatic scandal and in July 1870, France resolved to end it in full-scale war. The conflict was quickly decided as Prussia, joined by forces of Pan-German alliance never gave up the tactical initiative. Series of victories in northeastern France followed and another French army group was simultaneously encircled at Metz. Few weeks later, the French army contingent under Emperor Napoleon E's personal command was finally forced to capitulate in the fortress of Sedan. Napoleon was taken prisoner and provisional government hastily proclaimed in Paris. The new government resolved to fight on and tried to reorganize the remaining armies while the Germans settled down to besiege Paris. The starving city surrendered in January 1871 and Jules Favre signed the surrender at Versailles. France was forced to pay indemnities of 5 billion francs and cede Alsace-Lorraine to Germany. This conclusion left the French national psyche deeply humiliated and further aggravated the French-German enmity. During the siege of Paris, the German princes assembled in the Hall of Mirrors of the Palace of Versailles on January 18, 1871 and announced the establishment of the German Empire and proclaimed the Prussian King Wilhelm as German Emperor. The act unified all ethnic German states with the exception of Austria in the Little German Solution of Federal Economic, Political and Administrative Unit. Bismarck, was appointed to serve as Chancellor. Federal Empire The new empire was federal union of 25 states that varied considerably in size, demography, constitution, economy, culture, religion and socio-political development. However, even Prussia itself, which accounted for two-thirds of the territory as well as of the population, had emerged from the empire's periphery as newcomer. It also faced colossal cultural and economic internal divisions. The Prussian provinces, of Westphalia and the Rhineland for example had been under French control during the previous decades. The local people, who had benefited from the liberal, civil reforms, that were derived from the ideas of the French Revolution, had only little in common with predominantly rural communities in authoritarian and disjointed Junker estates of Pomerania. The inhabitants of the smaller territorial lands, especially in central and southern Germany greatly rejected the Prussianized concept of the nation and preferred to associate such terms with their individual home state. 
the Hanseatic port, cities of Hamburg, Bremen and Lübeck ranked among the most ferocious opponents of the so-called contract with Prussia. As advocates of free trade, they objected Prussian ideas of economic integration and refused to sign the renewed Salferine, Custom Union, treaties until 1888. The Hanseatic merchants' overseas economic success corresponded with their globalist mindset. The citizen of Hamburg, whom Bismarck characterized as extremely irritating and the German ambassador in London as the worst Germans we have, were particularly appalled by Prussian militarism and its unopposed growing influence. The Prusso-German authorities were aware of necessary integration concepts as the results and the 52% voter turnout of the first imperial elections had clearly demonstrated. Historians increasingly argue that the nation-state was forged through empire. National identity was expressed in bombastic imperial stone iconography and was to be achieved as an imperial people, with an emperor as head of state and it was to develop imperial ambitions, domestic, European and global. Bismarck's domestic policies as Chancellor of Germany were based on his effort to universally adopt the idea of the Protestant Prussian state and achieve the clear separation of church and state in all imperial principalities. In the Kulturkampf, lit culture struggle, from 1871 to 1878, he tried to minimize the influence of the Roman Catholic Church and its political arm, the Catholic Center Party, via secularization of all education and introduction of civil marriage but without success. The Kulturkampf antagonized many Protestants as well as Catholics and was eventually abandoned. The millions of non-German imperial subjects, like the Polish, Danish and French minorities, were left with no choice but to endure discrimination or accept the policies of Germanization. Three-class system aristocracy the new empire provided attractive top-level career opportunities for the national nobility in the various branches of the consular and civil services and the army. As consequence the aristocratic near-total control of the civil sector guaranteed dominant voice in the decision-making in the universities and the churches. The 1914 German diplomatic corps consisted of princes, 29 counts, 20 barons, 54 representatives of the lower nobility and mere 11 commoners. These commoners were indiscriminately recruited from elite industrialist and banking families. The consular corps employed numerous commoners that however, occupied positions of little to no executive power. The Prussian tradition to reserve the highest military ranks for young aristocrats was adopted and the new constitution put all military affairs under the direct control of the emperor and beyond control of the Reichstag. With its large corps of reserve officers across Germany, the military strengthened its role as the estate which upheld the nation, and historian Hans Ulrich Weller added, it became an almost separate, self-perpetuating caste. Power increasingly was centralized among the 7,000 aristocrats, who resided in the national capital of Berlin and neighboring Potsdam. Berlin's rapidly increasing rich middle class copied the aristocracy and tried to marry into it peerage could permanently boost rich industrial family into the upper reaches of the establishment. However, the process tended to work in the other direction as the nobility became industrialists. For example, 221 of the 243 mines in Silesia were owned by nobles or by the king of Prussia himself. Middle class the middle class in the cities grew exponentially although it never acquired the powerful parliamentary representation and legislative rights as in France, Britain or the United States. The Association of German Women's Organizations or BDF was established in 1894 to encompass the proliferating women's organizations that had emerged since the 1860s. From the beginning the BDF was bourgeois organization, its members working toward equality with men in such areas as education, financial opportunities, in political life. Working class women were not welcome and were organized by the socialists. Working class the rise of the Socialist Workers' Party, later known as the Social Democratic Party of Germany, SPD, aimed to peacefully establish socialist order through the transformation of the existing political and social conditions. From 1878, Bismarck tried to oppose the growing social democratic movement by outlawing the party's organization, its assemblies and most of its newspapers. Nonetheless, the Social Democrats grew stronger and Bismarck initiated his social welfare program in 1883 in order to appease the working class. 
Bismarck built on tradition of welfare programs in Prussia and Saxony that began as early as the 1840s. In the 1880s he introduced old age pensions, accident insurance, medical care, and unemployment insurance that formed the basis of the modern European welfare state. His paternalistic programs won the support of German industry because its goals were to win the support of the working classes for the empire and reduce the outflow of immigrants to America, where wages were higher but welfare did not exist. Bismarck further won the support of both industry and skilled workers by his high tariff policies, which protected profits and wages from American competition, although, they alienated the liberal intellectuals who wanted free trade. Kulturkampf Bismarck would not tolerate any power outside Germany, as in Rome, having say in domestic affairs. He launched the Kulturkampf, culture war, against the power of the Pope and the Catholic Church in 1873, but only in the state of Prussia. This gained strong support from German liberals, who saw the Catholic Church as the bastion of reaction and their greatest enemy. The Catholic element, in turn, saw in the national liberals the worst enemy and formed the center party Catholics, although nearly a third of the national population were seldom allowed to hold major positions in the imperial government or the Prussian government. After 1871, there was systematic purge of the remaining Catholics. In the powerful interior ministry, which handled all police affairs, the only Catholic was messenger boy. Jews were likewise heavily discriminated against. Most of the Kulturkampf was fought out in Prussia, but Imperial Germany passed the pulpit law which made it crime for any cleric to discuss public issues in way that displeased the government. Nearly all Catholic bishops, clergy, and laymen rejected the legality of the new laws and defiantly faced the increasingly heavy penalties and imprisonments imposed by Bismarck's government. Historian Anthony Steinhoff reports the casualty totals, as of 1878. Only three of eight Prussian dioceses still had bishops, some 1,125 of 4,600 parishes were vacant, and nearly 1,800 priests ended up in jail or in exile. Finally, between 1872 and 1878, numerous Catholic newspapers were confiscated, Catholic associations and assemblies were dissolved, and Catholic civil servants were dismissed merely on the pretense of having ultramontane sympathies. Bismarck underestimated the resolve of the Catholic Church and did not foresee the extremes that this struggle would attain. The Catholic Church denounced the harsh new laws as anti-Catholic and mustered the support of its rank and file orders across Germany. In the following elections, the Centre Party won quarter of the seats in the Imperial Diet. The conflict ended after 1879 because Pope Pius IX died in 1878 and Bismarck broke with the Liberals to put his main emphasis on tariffs, foreign policy, and attacking socialists. Bismarck negotiated with the conciliatory new Pope Leo XIII. Peace was restored, the bishops returned and the jailed clerics were released. Laws were toned down or taken back. Mitigation Laws 1880-1883 and Peace Laws 1886-87, but the laws concerning education, civil registry of marriages and religious disaffiliation remained in place. The Centre Party gained strength and became an ally of Bismarck, especially when he attacked socialism. Foreign Policies and Relations Chancellor Bismarck's imperial foreign policy basically aimed at security and the prevention of Franco-Russian alliance, in order to avoid likely two-front war. The League of Three Emperors was signed in 1873 by Russia, Austria, and Germany. It stated that republicanism and socialism were common enemies and that the three powers would discuss any matters concerning foreign policy. Bismarck needed good relations with Russia in order to keep friends isolated. Russia fought victorious war against the Ottoman Empire from 1877 to 1878 and attempted to establish the Principality of Bulgaria, that was strongly opposed by France and Britain in particular, as they were long concerned with the preservation of the Ottoman Empire and Russian containment at the Bosphorus Strait and the Black Sea. Germany hosted the Congress of Berlin in 1878, where more moderate peace settlement was agreed upon. In 1879, Germany formed the dual alliance with Austria-Hungary, an agreement of mutual military assistance in the case of an attack from Russia, which was not satisfied with the agreement of the Congress of Berlin. The establishment of the dual alliance led Russia to take more conciliatory stance and in 1887, 
the so-called reinsurance treaty was signed between Germany and Russia. In it, the two powers agreed on mutual military support in the case that France attacked Germany or an Austrian attack on Russia. Russia turned its attention eastward to Asia and remained largely inactive in European politics for the next 25 years. In 1882, Italy, seeking supporters for its interests in North Africa against France's colonial policy, joined the Dual Alliance, which became the Triple Alliance. In return for German and Austrian support, Italy committed itself to assisting Germany in the case of French attack. Bismarck had always argued that the acquisition of overseas colonies was impractical and the burden of administration and maintenance would outweigh the benefits. Eventually, Bismarck gave way, and number of colonies were established in Africa, Togo, the Cameroons, German Southwest Africa, and German East Africa, and in Oceania, German New Guinea, the Bismarck Archipelago, and the Marshall Islands. Consequently, Bismarck initiated the Berlin Conference of 1885, formal meeting of the European colonial powers, who sought to establish international guidelines for the acquisition of African territory, see colonization of Africa. Its outcome, the General Act of the Berlin Conference, can be seen as the formalization of the scramble for Africa and new imperialism. Wilhelminian era, 1888-1918, Wilhelm II Emperor William died in 1888. His son Frederick III, opened for more liberal political course, reigned only for 99 days, as he was stricken with throat cancer and died three months after his coronation. His son Wilhelm II followed him on the throne at the age of 29. Wilhelm rejected the liberal ideas of his parents and embarked on conservative autocratic rule. He early on decided to replace the political elite and in March 1890 he forced Chancellor Bismarck into retirement. Following his principle of personal regiment, Wilhelm was determined to exercise maximum influence on all government affairs. Alliances and diplomacy The young Kaiser Wilhelm set out to apply his imperialist ideas of Weltpolitik, German, v. LTPOLI T K world politics as he envisaged gratuitously aggressive political course to increase the empire's influence in and control over the world after the removal of Bismarck foreign policies were tackled with by the Kaiser and the Federal Foreign Office under Friedrich von Holstein Wilhelm's increasingly erratic and reckless conduct was unmistakably related to character deficits and the lack of diplomatic skills. The Foreign Office's rather sketchy assessment of the current situation and its recommendations for the Empire's most suitable course of action were, first long-term coalition between France and Russia had to fall apart, secondly, Russia and Britain would never get together, and finally, Britain would eventually seek an alliance with Germany. Subsequently, Wilhelm refused to renew the reinsurance treaty with Russia. Russia promptly formed closer relationship with France in the Dual Alliance of 1894, as both countries were concerned about the novel disagreeability of Germany. Furthermore, Anglo-German relations provided, from British point of view, no basis for any consensus as the Kaiser refused to divert from his, although somewhat peculiarly desperate and anachronistic, aggressive imperial engagement and the naval arms race in particular. Von Holstein's analysis proved to be mistaken on every point. Wilhelm, however, failed to, as he did not adopt nuanced political dialogue. Germany was left gradually isolated and dependent on the Triple Alliance with Austria-Hungary and Italy. This agreement was hampered by differences between Austria and Italy and in 1915 Italy left the alliance. In 1897 Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz State Secretary of the German Imperial Naval Office devised his initially rather practical, yet nonetheless ambitious plan to build sizable naval force. Although basically posing only an indirect threat as fleet and being, Tirpitz theorized that its mere existence would force Great Britain, dependent on unrestricted movement on the seas, to agree to diplomatic compromises. Tirpitz started the program of warship construction in 1898 and enjoyed the full support of Kaiser Wilhelm. Wilhelm entertained less rational ideas on the fleet, that circled, around his romantic childhood dream to have fleet of, his own someday and his obsessive adherence to direct his policies along the line of Alfred Thayermann's work the influence of sea power upon history. In exchange for the eastern African island of Zanzibar, 
Germany had bargained the island of Heligoland and the German Bight with Britain in 1890, and converted the island into naval base and installed immense coastal defense batteries. Britain considered the Imperial German endeavors to be dangerous infringement on the century-old delicate balance of global affairs and trade on the seas, under British control. The British, however, resolved to keep up the naval arms race and introduced the highly advanced new dreadnought battleship concept in 1907. Germany quickly adopted the concept and by 1910 the arms race again escalated. In the first Moroccan crisis of 1905, Germany nearly clashed with Britain and France when the latter attempted to establish protectorate over Morocco. Kaiser Wilhelm II was upset at having not been informed about French intentions, and declared their support for Moroccan independence. William II made highly provocative speech regarding this. The following, year, conference was held in which all of the European powers except Austria-Hungary, by now little more than German satellite, sat it with France. Compromise was brokered by the United States where the French relinquished some, but not all, control over Morocco. The second Moroccan crisis of 1911 saw another dispute over Morocco erupt when France tried to suppress revolt there. Germany, still smarting from the previous quarrel, agreed to settlement whereby the French ceded some territory in Central Africa in exchange for Germany's renouncing any right to intervene in Moroccan affairs. This, confirmed French control over Morocco, which became full protectorate of that country in 1912. Economy By 1890 the economy continued to industrialize and grow on an even higher rate than during the previous two decades and increased dramatically in the years leading up to World War I. As the growth rates for the individual branches and sectors often varied considerably, and periodical figures provided by the Kaiserliche Statistische Amt, Imperial Statistical Bureau, are often disputed or just assessments. Classification and naming of internationally traded commodities and exported goods was still in progress and the structure of production and export had changed during four decades. Published documents provide numbers such as, the proportion of goods manufactured by the modern industry was approximately 25% in 1900, while the proportion of consumer-related products in manufactured exports stood at 40%. Reasonably exact are the figures for the entire industrial production between 1870 and 1914, which increased about 500%. Historian J. A. Perkins argued that more important than Bismarck's new tariff on imported grain was the introduction of the sugar beet as main crop. Farmers quickly abandoned traditional, inefficient practices in favor of modern methods, including the use of artificial fertilizers and mechanical tools. Intensive methodical farming of sugar and other root crops made Germany the most efficient agricultural producer in Europe by 1914. Even so, farms were usually small in size and women did much of the field work. An unintended consequence was the increased dependence on migratory, especially foreign, labor. The basics of the modern chemical research laboratory layout and the introduction of essential equipment and instruments such as Bunsen burners, the Petri dish, the Erlenmeyer flask, task-oriented working principles and team research originated in 19th century Germany in France. The organization of knowledge acquisition was further refined by laboratory integration and research institutes of the universities and the industries. Germany acquired a leading role in the world's chemical industry by the late 19th century through strictly organized methodology. In 1913, the German chemical industry produced almost 90% of the global supply of dye stuffs and sold about 80% of its production abroad. Germany became Europe's leading, steel-producing nation in the 1890s, thanks in large part to the protection from American and British competition afforded by tariffs and cartels. The leading firm was Friedrich Krupp AG Hoesch Krupp, run by the Krupp family. The merger of several major firms into the Vernet Steelwork, United Steelworks, in 1926 was modeled on the U.S. Steel Corporation in the United States. The new company emphasized rationalization of management structures and modernization of the technology. It employed multi-divisional structure and used return on investment as its measure of success. By 1913, American and German exports dominated the world steel market, as Britain slipped to third place. In machinery, iron and steel, and other industries, German firms avoided cutthroat competition and instead relied on trade associations. 
Germany was world leader because of its prevailing corporatist mentality, its strong bureaucratic tradition, and the encouragement of the government. These associations regulate competition and allow small firms to function in the shadow of much larger companies. Women Germany's unification process after 1871 was heavily dominated by men and give priority to the fatherland theme and related male issues, such as military prowess. Nevertheless, middle-class women enrolled in the Bund Deutscher Frauenverein, the Union of German Feminist Organizations, BDF. Founded in 1894, it grew to include 137 separate women's rights groups from 1907 until 1933, when the Nazi regime disbanded the organization. The BDF gave national direction to the proliferating women's organizations that had sprung up since the 1860s. From the beginning the BDF was bourgeois organization, its members working toward equality with men in such areas as education, financial opportunities, in political life. Working class women were not welcome. They were organized by the socialists' formal organizations for promoting women's rights grew in numbers during the Wilhelmin period. German feminists began to network with feminists from other countries, and participated in the growth of international organizations. Colonies by the 1890s, German colonial expansion in Asia and the Pacific, Kiochao in China, the Marianas, the Caroline Islands, Samoa, led to frictions with Britain, Russia, Japan and the United States. The construction of the Baghdad Railway, financed by German banks, was designed to eventually connect Germany with the Turkish Empire and the Persian Gulf, but it also collided with British and Russian geopolitical interests. The largest colonial enterprises were in Africa. The harsh treatment of the Nama and Herero in what is now Namibia in Africa in 1906-2007 led to charges of genocide against the Germans. Historians are examining the links and precedents between the Herero and Namaqua genocide and the Holocaust of the 1940s. World War causes ethnic demands for nation-states upset the balance between the empires that dominated Europe, leading to World War I, which started in August 1914. Germany stood behind its ally Austria in confrontation with Serbia, but Serbia was under the protection of Russia, which was allied to France. Germany was the leader of the Central Powers, which included Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and later Bulgaria. Arrayed against them were the Allies, consisting chiefly of Russia, France, Britain, and in 1915 Italy. In explaining why neutral Britain went to war with Germany, Author Paul M. Kennedy recognized it was critical for war that Germany become economically more powerful than Britain, but he downplays the disputes over economic trade imperialism, the Baghdad Railway, confrontations in Central and Eastern Europe, high-charged political rhetoric and domestic pressure groups. Germany's reliance time and again on sheer power, while Britain increasingly appealed to moral sensibilities, played role especially in seeing the invasion of Belgium as necessary military tactic or profound moral crime. The German invasion of Belgium was not important because the British decision had already been made and the British were more concerned with the fate of France. Kennedy argues that by far the main reason was, London's fear that repeat of 1870 when Prussia and the German states smashed France would mean that Germany, with powerful army and navy, would control the English Channel and Northwest France. British policymakers insisted that would be catastrophe for British security. Western Front in the West, Germany sought quick victory by encircling Paris using the Schlieffen Plan. But it failed due to Belgian resistance, Berlin's diversion of troops, and very stiff French resistance on the Marne, north of Paris. The Western Front became an extremely bloody battleground of trench warfare. The stalemate lasted from 1914 until early 1918 with ferocious battles that moved forces few hundred yards at best a long line that stretched from the North Sea to the Swiss border. The British imposed tight naval blockade in the North Sea which lasted until 1919, sharply reducing Germany's overseas access to raw materials and foodstuffs. Food scarcity became serious problem by 1917 the United States joined with the Allies in April 1917. The entry of the United States into the war following Germany's declaration of unrestricted submarine warfare, marked decisive, turning point against Germany. Eastern Front more wide open was the fighting on the Eastern Front. In the East, there were decisive victories against the Russian army, 
The trapping and defeat of large parts of the Russian contingent at the Battle of Tannenberg, followed by huge Austrian and German successes. The breakdown of Russian forces, exacerbated by internal turmoil caused by the 1917 Russian Revolution, led to the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. The Bolsheviks were forced to sign on March 1918 as Russia withdrew from the war. It gave Germany control of Eastern Europe. Spencer, Tucker says, the German general staff had formulated extraordinarily harsh terms that shocked even the German negotiator. When Germany later complained that the Treaty of Versailles of 1919 was too harsh on them, the Allies responded that it was more benign than brest litovsk 1918 by defeating Russia in 1917 Germany was able to bring hundreds of thousands of combat troops from the east to the Western Front, giving it numerical advantage over the Allies. By retraining the soldiers in new stormtrooper tactics, the Germans expected to unfreeze the battlefield and win decisive victory before the American army arrived in strength. However, the spring offensives all failed, as the Allies fell back and regrouped, and the Germans lacked the reserves necessary to consolidate their gains. In the summer, with the Americans arriving at 10,000 day, and the German reserves exhausted, it was only a matter of time before multiple Allied offenses destroyed the German army. Home from unexpectedly Germany plunged into World War, 1914-1918. It rapidly mobilized its civilian economy for the war effort, the economy was handicapped by the British blockade that cut off food supplies. Meanwhile, conditions deteriorated rapidly on the home front, with severe food shortages reported in all urban areas. Causes involved the transfer of many farmers and food workers into the military, an overburdened railroad system, shortages of coal, and the British blockade that cut off imports from abroad. The winter of 1916-1917 was known as the turnip winter, because that vegetable, usually fed to livestock, was used by people as substitute for potatoes and meat, which were increasingly scarce. Thousands of soup kitchens were opened to feed the hungry people, who grumbled that the farmers were, keeping the food for themselves. Even the army had to cut the rations for soldiers. Morale of both civilians and soldiers continued to sink. 1918 was also the year of the deadly 1918 Spanish flu pandemic which struck hard at population weakened by years of malnutrition. Revolution 1918 The end of October 1918, in Wilhelmshaven, in northern Germany, saw the beginning of the German Revolution of 1918-19. Units of the German Navy refused to set sail for last, large-scale operation in war which they saw as good as lost, initiating the uprising. On November, the revolt spread to other cities and states of the country, in many of which workers and soldiers' councils were established. Meanwhile, Hindenburg and the senior commanders had lost confidence in the Kaiser and his government. The Kaiser and all German ruling princes abdicated. On November 1918, the Social Democrat Philip Schadmann proclaimed Republic. On November 11, the Compagnie Armistice was signed, ending the war. The Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919. Germany was to cede Alsace-Lorraine to France. Upin Melmady would temporarily be ceded to Belgium, with plebiscite to be held to allow the people the choice of the territory either remaining with Belgium or being returned to German control. Following plebiscite, the territory was allotted to Belgium on September 20, 1920. The future of North Schleswig was to be decided by plebiscite. In the Schleswig plebiscites, the Danish-speaking population in the north voted for Denmark and the southern, German-speaking populace, part voted for Germany. Schleswig was thus partitioned. Holstein remained German without referendum. Memel was ceded to the Allied and Associated Powers, to decide the future of the area. On January 1923, Lithuanian forces invaded the territory. Following negotiations, on May 1924, the League of Nations ratified the annexation on the grounds that Lithuania accepted the Memo Statute, power-sharing arrangement to protect non-Lithuanians in the territory and its autonomous status. Until 1929, German-Lithuanian cooperation increased and this power-sharing arrangement worked. Poland was restored and most of the provinces of Posen and West Prussia, and some areas of Upper Silesia were reincorporated into the reformed country after plebiscites and independence uprisings. All German colonies were to be handed over to League of Nations, 
who then assigned them as mandates to Australia, France, Japan, New Zealand, Portugal, and the United Kingdom. The new owners were required to act as disinterested trustee over the region, promoting the welfare of its inhabitants in a variety of ways until they were able to govern themselves. The left and right banks of the Rhine were to be permanently demilitarized. The industrially important Saarland was to be governed by the League of Nations for 15 years and its coal fields administered by France. At the end of that time plebiscite was to determine the Tsar's future status. To ensure execution of the treaty's terms, Allied troops would occupy the left, German, bank of the Rhine for a period of 5 to 15 years. The German army was to be limited to 100,000 officers and men. The general staff was to be dissolved. Vast quantities of war material were to be handed over and the manufacture of munitions rigidly curtailed. The navy was to be similarly reduced, and no military aircraft were allowed. Germany was also required to pay reparations for all civilian damage caused during the war. Weimar Republic, 1919-1933 overview the humiliating peace terms in the